the existing building. And what they're focused on right now on the existing building are the windows, the brick repair, limestone repair. Um, Renaissance roofing, the other contractor already finished the roof. So you can't really see it um, other than the drone footage which you might have seen, the new clay tile roof and the new proper gutters and downspouts. They're holding off on the downspouts. These are just temporary uh, corrugated plastic downspouts to preserve the copper ones from getting damaged. So we're keeping the old wood windows. They'll all be restored. We'll put new storm glazing on the outside to help with energy efficiency. Uh, but we're going to keep the old windows and essentially paint them, fix them up. Anywhere where the sashes are missing, where they had old air conditioning units in, we're going to put back sashes that match the old ones. Um, you can see in some places where we're beginning to repoint the border. Uh, one thing that I've noticed, we've gone through several attempts to try to match the old mortar. It, it would appear to me that we got off that match somewhere because I can see some spots in the front where the match is not good. We'll likely end up having to redo some of that. It just doesn't look very good. Uh, some places where we looked at samples, the mortar looks good. So they, they've gotten off somewhere with the mortar. But that's always a tricky thing to do is to match the mortar. Um, the mortar, a lot of people don't realize this, but that, that mortar color makes a huge difference in how everything looks on the outside. So you can change that mortar color and it'll look like you changed the brick. But that mortar color has a significant impact on the visual looks of things. So we're doing our best to try to match it. Um, so we, we required them to put up a scaffold for the duration of all the work that requires masonry work, wood windows. We want that scaffold to stay up so that we can get a close up look at it uh, when work is taking place. So the scaffold should stay up until they're finished really on the exterior. different. So we basically have kept the corridors, the stairs, the marble lobby, but everything on the other side of the corridor wall has been removed. So if you take your peek, if you take a peek inside these rooms, you'll see metal studs. We'll add sheetrock, you know, to those walls after they wire them up. Uh, but we're keeping all the old plaster where we can in the corridors. Uh, one thing you'll notice which is different is this thing here and there's another set over here. So those were added on the first floor and the second floor in order to create a rated means of egress from the upstairs directly to the exterior. So the new code requires that stairs these days would be rated one hour for fire protection. In the case of fire, people have an hour to get out of the building safely. So these doors will always be open. So you'll be able to see through, but they're on magnetic catches. So in the case someone pulls a fire alarm, the magnet loses power and the doors will automatically shut. So automatically, if somebody pulls the fire alarm, this stairway and the other stairway become a rated means of egress. So that's one thing that we've had to do in order to improve safety uh, in the building. That's something that we have to do, but it's not sprinkler. We're not putting fire sprinkler in the old building, but we are in the addition. Um, all the lighting will change. We'll have new light fixtures, better than these, um, mounted where they used to be. Um, new paint. All the marble will be cleaned. 
and regrout it. So over the years, a lot of the grout has fallen out of the joints. It, it doesn't look like much now, it's still pretty dirty, but once it's cleaned, it'll look pretty, pretty. pretty bright and shiny marble like it did originally. Right now it's, it's pretty heavily stained. Uh, their stairs will be painted. If you look real closely, you know, these are concrete steps, but there's a cast iron nosing that's set into concrete. And then over the years, they put some black uh, friction tape over the cast iron nosing. We'll strip all that paint off and paint the cast iron nosing more of an accent color. So visually, when you are going down the stairs, you can see that contrast and know where the edge of the step is. And basically use the, the, the pattern inside that cast iron uh, nosing in order to get some uh, better slip resistance on top of the paint that we're using. Um, we can take a peek in here. By the way, you'll notice all the plywood is down. We did that right off the bat to protect the old quarry tile flooring. So we just did that to protect it during demolition. Come inside one of the suites here. You'll kind of get a feel for what each one is going to look like. So all new, all new walls and partitions, all new power, heat and air, um, and plumbing. There's still going to be some surface mounted conduit on the walls. We're, we've restored the plaster, so we're patching plaster where it was damaged. You can tell where the new plaster patching is. And the old plaster, you can see it real clearly. It'll get painted, so once it's painted, you won't be able to tell. Um, the heat and air units, so we'll see one here pretty soon. I'll show, I'll show one to you so you can kind of get an idea how that works. Um, but from here, you can kind of get a sense for how it's going to be divided up. This is going to be the collector. So the collector has more room than he used to have. Not a great deal more space, but he's got more than he used to have. If we go over here, this is uh, the marble lobby is just kind of off limits for everybody while we just put our old light fixtures there, window sashes and old pews. Here again, all that marble is going to be cleaned and regrouted. Uh, a part of what we uh, paid St. Louis Antique Lighting Company to do is to restore the old fixtures that were hanging from the marble lobby, as well as the new chandelier in the courtroom. These fixtures here are original to the building. Those are surface mounted down the corridor. We're going to keep those old fixtures, clean them and relamp them and put new LED lamps in the lights. So we get to keep the old fixtures but get more light out of them. Uh, hey Casey. Hey, we got hard hats. Um, so this will be a room that will get some attention after a little while. It's just temporary heat and air. Have you all get your hard hats on and we'll continue the tour. Bill Nelson needs one and Steve needs one. And then I'll just want to miss it. Thank you. One more. Can we get to keep these? Huh? Can we get to keep these? Well, you know what, if you'd like to keep it, you go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're in every corner, so we can see the We've tried to keep the character of the old courthouse, you know, by not making too many changes in the corridor. So these entryways, like the, the frames, the marble trim that goes around the doors, we'll have new doors, new hardware, but we're keeping the frames uh, and sort of the feel of the old court room, courthouse. There used to be an electrical panel box that was where that plaster patch is. Uh, we're taking that out because we got electrical somewhere else. So it's just we can make it a little bit nicer. But it's still pretty simple. We don't want to change the character of the courthouse too much. Don't make the sound crazy. When the door is shut, it'll be better, yeah. The, the, the storm windows are ready, we'll add some sound protection.
is I want you to see around the corner right here. So the county clerk obviously keeps up with the records for the county. Um, where you're standing at over in the front doorway is essentially the reception area and the offices are over there. This room here is within that elliptical uh, space plan. It's essentially a place for meetings or conferences or could be an office. Um, where we're standing right here and in this space right here will be documents. So where the county clerk keeps their records and documents, those tables will be in this area here. One thing that we kind of had in mind, which we thought might be kind of interesting, was to put some of these records on display so people could see them. So in this space here, we'll have those tables with all those records available for people to look at. But this corridor, which links the new addition to the old building, this the old window that we took out and put in the new doorway, people can access the old courthouse from this direction. But we'll, we'll hang these translucent panels from the ceiling on tables. And on those panels, we can display county photographs or county history. We can put, we can scan, make high resolution scan of some of the oldest documents in the county and put them on display here. So in this space, it's the same on both floors. So both on the first and second floor, we have the opportunity to kind of show people their history um, in this area and at the same time give them a glimpse of the old county records. So this is the county clerk and the circuit clerk is upstairs. So they have that. So it's sort of a mini exhibit, uh, a place for people to see their county records. Uh, one thing, uh, we're talking about history, uh, one thing I failed to mention is we were coming in the, the doorway. When we go back outside that doorway, if you look up, look real closely, you'll see old cast iron uh, washers that are mounted to the brick, cast iron, they're lion's heads. Those cast iron lion's heads is where the old canopy used to hang. And we know from one old photograph, we know from uh, 1920 Sanborn Fire Insurance maps, and yeah, we just also know from the 20s what they used to do. That used to be a copper and glass canopy. So we're putting a new canopy over that entryway. There used to be one on each side. This one will be uh, designed and built to a period to, as we would have had in the 1920s. And then on that canopy, they always had decorative patterns. They always had ornamental uh, features on the fascia of that canopy. And one thing that we thought might be interesting to put on the fascia of that canopy are patterns that, were, that we could pick up from the Novena site. So we're at Hampson Archaeological Museum. You have evidence of the native peoples that were here a long time ago. Native in this area, we thought it might be interesting to sort of have some of that history on display on the canopy. So as you see these really neat patterns of circles and shapes, that's coming from those people that were here that were native, kind of make it a really unique feature uh, to Mississippi County, to this courthouse. And then on the doorways that we're putting back, we'll put back uh, wood doors that would have been there in the 1920s. We'll have on the glass names of the townships in Mississippi County. So all the townships will be represented on the east side and the west side. So just a way to kind of bring the history of Mississippi County and put it on display uh, around the corner. Yeah, so this is going to be, I think it's going to be an office. Uh, it, doesn't, it could be a, a conference room or just a really cool office space, but that's basically what this room is going to be. We'll have opaque glass on the windows, so you won't be able to see how, because on the other side of those windows is a mechanical room. But nothing to look at because that's where the condition is. But we'll just have a opaque glass uh, so that you can't see out. But we didn't want to demolish the original uh, electrical room here. And there's another space right above this. Uh, we built these fur downs here um, in order to conceal as much of the piping and conduit as possible. I see this one's on the wrong side of the fur down. Uh, but we built some of those trays in order to give uh, contractors the ability to conceal as much of that stuff as possible. Uh, we'll see one of those new heat and air units here in a second. I can explain how that's going to work. No more, no more boiler, no more uh, radiators. Yeah, there we go.
It's called a variable refrigerant flow or uh, a VRF system. And what I've been told anyway, it's basically second only to geothermal is the most efficient mechanical system that you can get. But basically all of these units are controlled by these boxes that are concealed up above the burn downs that, that regulate how much uh, fluid is coming to each one of these units so that whether or not they're running air conditioning or uh, hot air, they're as efficient as possible. I'm not an engineer, I can't explain it to a large degree, but they're, they are very energy efficient as far as what they're delivering and how much power they take to deliver it. So what's nice is that they'll be essentially taking the place of the radiator. So we're used to have a radiator, you'll have one of these units. Um, and that's how we're getting uh, heat and air to all the spaces. It does require piping, so if you come into this space, you'll see there's, there is some uh, surface mounted conduit. We're hiding it where we can, but in other places it'll be exposed and that'll all be painted. Uh, one thing that's not in the space just yet are, are built-ins. So there'll, there'll be a countertop here. This is the, uh, this is the collectors. Yeah, the assessor's office is where we went in first. This is the collector's space. So they'll come in the doorway here and there'll be a countertop and collector uh, cubicles will be back in here where they can sit and work. The workspace back in here and this is essentially storage back in here for the collector. So it's, it's more space than they used to have, but it's not anywhere close to what they've got right now in Burdett. You know, they're used to a lot of space in Burdett, but they're going to be coming into smaller offices. The collector and the assessor have the smallest of the new office spaces. Uh, the, the treasurer, finance, the county clerk, and the circuit clerk all have a lot more space than they used to have. Uh, so let's go, I don't know if we can go just make sure it worked. <laughs> You can come right up to the concrete edge and step out over here. Yeah. You can see where the condition is. They've got the mats over the concrete to just uh, minimize cracking. Um, from that hot sun. This is the uh, elevator pit that you see in front of us with the wood rail around it. The new, rent the new entryway is over here. There'll be a new set of steps that come up. If you come up these steps, there'll be glass at this corner so that you'll, get, you'll see the edge of your old courthouse. We're stopping the corner of the new addition just shy of the old courthouse. So we wanted it to be a real clean break and distinction between what's old. Major 
piece that you really see in the, the, the addition is sort of a minor uh, structure. The, the sally for it is where the sound is. So here pretty soon they'll look at the train. You can't hardly tell, but uh, this is this is limestone. You know, same stuff they built the Arkansas Capitol out of. A lot of government buildings use limestone, and then brick above, and then it picks up limestone again at the top of the building until you get to that part that projects out is terracotta. But they finished it with a special paint to make it look like limestone. So you can't hardly tell if there's a change in material. Uh, but that's something that was passed by the previous uh, contract. Right. Uh, any questions so far? Do you want to go upstairs? Um, of course, this is where the elevator used to be. Uh, one more thing to that I might mention here. So this is where the elevator used to be. We're putting in new elevators uh, on the, in the addition. We have three new elevators. One's for the public, one's for prisoners, one's for the back of house judges and staff. So everybody is separated out. It makes it much safer when you don't have the prisoner use the same hallway as uh, victims' families. So that's the first rule in courtroom design these days is to separate out everybody and make sure it's uh, safer. We knew when we took that elevator off that we were going to have some nasty stuff left behind on the brick. And that's going to be impossible really to remove and make it look presentable. So we're not really restoring these openings. We won't put back the old windows here um, or the old canopy. What we will put back is the glass curtain wall that glass curtain wall system is going to match the glass curtain wall in the addition. So it's sort of a way to blend the new and the old and bring it over here and at the same time use it as a tool to cover up that ugly. So the, the width of the new curtain wall is going to span past where the ugly part is so you don't, so you don't see it. So it's sort of a way to, to kill two birds with one stone, so to speak. Alright, we'll go inside and look. You want to go upstairs? Similar to what you saw down in the first 
it might be kind of hard to remember what used to be here. This used to be the circuit court. This used to be Leslie's space. And her documents were over here. There was a safe in that corner. And she had a compact storage in that corner. You can see again what we're doing with the exhibits. So again, more, more space for showing off documents and displays. Uh, this is going to actually be the, the uh, reception area for the for the uh, circuit clerk, and then in here. I'm oh, sorry, I misspoke. This is the this is the treasure and the finance are in here. This is actually storage for them, so they got a lot of storage space. The entry to the treasure and the finance is over here. So the public can come in through this door here, and that door will be locked. And um, treasurer's office and finance director's office will be over there against the windows. This will be space for cubicles. By the way, uh, and then this is the entry way that will go into the addition. So on this floor in the addition, there'll be a common workroom. So anyone that works here will have access to a common break area and a workroom. And, and the break area and the workroom will be pretty, pretty good size. But that'll be where you have your large copier machine, big layout tables, if you've got big jobs, you know, once, once a year or something, you gotta make a bunch of prints and send out a lot of stuff. That'd be a great space for people to just uh, set up and do what they gotta do. Uh, have the space to do it. Uh, we put the treasurer and finance right next to each other so they can communicate often. There will be a wall up here, not here yet. But basically, we're also providing uh, keyless entry. So staff will have a key fob that allows them to get access to certain areas that the, that the public can't. So this is not, this is an area that the public can't get into. Uh, this is back of, back of house stuff, so only the staff will have a key fob that gets them back there. Not hard to visualize. Uh, this, is the, this is the county judge's office. So this is basically reception. Be Cindy's face. Whoever else can be in here. Um, we'll keep the old doorway to the balcony. We're not gonna, we'll, we'll adjust the hardware, but we're, we're gonna change that door out or change the hardware. We're gonna keep that intact. Uh, and then coming into the judge's office here, this will be the new, this will be the new judge's office. This is basically just a storage area, kind of a, a wet bar and a, a half bath for the county judge. This is kind of intended to be a nice space for meetings. You know, if there's high profile or high, high power meetings where you've got to kind of judge a meeting with the member, we don't want this to be a really nice space uh, for those kind of meetings to happen. So this is, it is that. Any questions? We can go back out that way we came in. If you want to. You're seeing you're seeing the old wall, you know, on the outside of all the plaster taken off. You know, the old wall is basically just two two wides of brick, what they call common brick. It's just real rough common stuff, cheap. Is there a dead space between the bricks? Is it just no, it's solid. And then, so there's there's two two wides of the common. I'll see that. Man. And then on the outside is that veneer brick, the, the good looking brick. So it's basically three wides, a brick thick. And then on the ground floor, it's the same thing. It's, it's four wides because it's three common brick plus the limestone veneer, which kind of steps out a little bit. And this outside structure is good and solid? Yes, oh yeah, very solid. The, and, the, and the concrete, I mean, the slabs are like eight inches thick. I mean, that's, if you, if you were to do a parking deck these days, by modern standard, it'd be an eight inch deck. So they built this thing very substantially. Um, so it's a, it's a, 
It's a tank. I just remember there's a lot of concern about the train vibration over the years and all that, but yeah. we don't have any of those issues. You don't have those issues. We talked to the uh, structural engineer early on. One of the first questions we asked was uh, seismic concerns. Um, we let him know about the railroad. Um, but just given um, how he knows this thing was built, it's, it's just not going to be an issue. I mean, earthquake, sending earthquakes aside, um, this building is very tough. Uh, and it was built, you know, so the full courthouses, most of them are gone and burned down. But at the end of the 19th century, early 20th century, courthouses were being replaced with masonry buildings. The wood buildings were no longer gone, they were burning. Um, so there was a common concern back then. So in the early 20th century when they were building these public buildings, they were building with concrete, brick, plaster, asbestos, fireproof material. So there was a, a concern of theirs when they were building. ceiling is very similar in a large courtroom. You have these beams with these Greek triglyphs, is what they're called. Uh, in the old courtroom and in the lobby here, they're just painted sort of one color. But really, what we would like to be able to do is put a lot more color there uh, and make that a lot richer in, in appearance. So, and probably decorate the undersides of these beams. So instead of them just being a flat, sort of lifeless surface, we can really dress up the column capitals and the way the column engages the beams. You really want to be able to dress that up to make that look nice as well as the pole. So we're leaving all that in place. Uh, this is the courtroom stage. This was a small courtroom and stays in a small courtroom. We're just replacing the judge's bench. Uh, this, this room was in real bad shape. If you remember the condition of the plaster and everything before, but they, they patched all the plaster. So everywhere we see this real light color, that's all the new plaster. I go up more on the light. Might as well with the this one. KC Cables with CNI as the project manager. How are you? How are you? And, uh, oh, Casey Wells. Hi. I think, yeah, with the third floor being shut down. Uh, uh, what else we kind of show? That window that we kind of recreated. Molly kind of talked about it. Yeah, uh, I haven't, they haven't seen a sample that you did. Is that here? The uh, one? Yeah, it's down here. It's down there in our, uh, oh, well, not the whole window. No, but the, but the sash yeah. that you built. Yeah, it's, it's down in the... So we need to see that. You'll see uh, uh, Casey's workmanship. So it's been a challenge. I'll let him talk about it. But having to replace, you know, on these windows where the, uh, the sashes are missing. Um, you, know, you can see over here where the plywood just covers up that opening. So we're putting back those decorative sashes. And I don't know how you do it. He does now. Well, I, I but it's a I trick. Could, There's I some carpentry, some 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 uh, yeah. skill involved in that. It, it took some some shapers and everything else to try to cut those molds. Boy, they used to create it back in 1919. So it's pretty neat stuff. Uh, I I did not. I was not the one that did it. We had some guys in our shops that are a lot better at it than I than I could ever do. So they they created it and made it, and it it's the best replica we can make of what they did back back when. Yeah. So they've got a sample that we looked at. Yes, definitely. You should take a look at it. It is amazing. It's pretty neat. Yeah. Like here where it's missing marble, is that? Yeah. What, what do you do there? Uh, put the marble back. So okay. there's not all the 
they are keeping a lot of the old marble right. places and we'll put it back. Um, on our drawings, I don't know how perfectly it ended up this way, but we made an attempt early on to, where we knew we were gonna have to remove some marble in places because new walls were going in or new doorways were cutting in. We wanted to salvage that marble and then we showed where we want to put it back. So I was pretty sure early we on. Pretty, pretty close. We took some that were a little bit wider that didn't a wall might have shifted here or there. And we, we just kind of had to switch spots in some areas. But for the local, we've had enough. It's all worked so, out. Yeah, we so we're not, gonna, we're not gonna end we're up gonna short. We're gonna fill the gaps. Yeah, so it's worked out good. Mm -hmm. So we'll keep that trim, keep that look. Yeah. yeah, most of the marble's down on our first floor, but we do have a few little marble trims up here. Yeah, we can the old, we can keep it, we need it in certain spots. Okay. All right. Let's go look at the size. All right. Right downstairs. The courtroom is uh, screened off. I'm just, she was just, I'm just distance. Oh, I see. Got it. Now, we'll add a new, new handrails here, so there'll be new handrail mounted to the wall. Um, for safer use. How slow we're going down there coming up the handrail, the handrail will come down and terminate here real nicely. So this is a sample of the wood sash that goes in the openings. It'll, it'll get painted, um, but it was built to match. We're using uh, Spanish cedar, which is not really a cedar. It's actually a mahogany, but it holds up really well in this climate. It's not gonna rot on you. So it's it's good stuff. So they have... Uh -huh. So those sashes have actual windows in them. Are they just covered up now or we will clean them off? Or yeah, so we're gonna take the paint off. All the glass has been painted. We'll scrape off all that paint. So we'll let the light back through it. Uh, each one of these windows will then get a storm window. So basically just another sheet of glass that's got low E coating on it that goes on the outside that protects it and uh, uh, reflects the heat from the sun uh, and also just it helps with the sound. So this is the exterior with, complete with the glazing putty. Still hasn't dried. <laughs> Um, but that's that's how they used to do it in the old days. That's what we're doing here. So it's a uh, it'll get painted. Once it's painted, it'll be done. But it looks good. It looks good. Yes, it does. Made it as close as you could. Yeah. Um, we can go down to the end of the hall. One place that we missed was the electrical room, which is impressive. Of course, it is. Nobody in there. Nobody up there. Just uh, black ball. Um, I missed it. Oh, well. Yeah. What do you think? It's a star. So there you go. Hey, hey, hey. What is this? What you uh, I think we'll finish before that. It's definitely a question for Casey. Right now, um, end of the summer is what the schedule says. I don't think so either, but... Uh, uh, you might want to take a peek in here. You can see they're busy. I'll get out of the way, but... That's where the old boiler used to be. You can leave that one. Oh, you can use that And now it's uh, the main electrical. So you can see enormous panels. Giant. I'll take one picture and get out of y'all's way. Uh, the electrical. So main electrical to the whole building is coming in right here. One of the reasons why we had a change order, if you remember, for that shunt strip to, for access to the electrical room is they, it's too, too difficult for the firefighters. They, they usually go to fire the electrical room to be accessible to the exterior. This is going to be on a uh, so the public won't be able to use this door, nor that door, nor the front door. The public has to come in through the new entry. Staff can come in through here by using a fob. But you don't want that for a firefighter that has to go hunting for that kind of stuff. You have to get through this door, then that door, and then another door. That won't fly. 
So that's why we do that shunt trip, so they can really easy when they pull up the building, put that switch and turn off the power. We were just showing everybody the, uh, the electrical room over here. You can see all the conduit and panels. That's where the new electrical will be built. So let's let's go outside. Excuse me. Uh, well, I, now you can talk to me now we outside. Yeah, yeah. No. Oh, praise the Lord. <laughs> now look back, if you will. Let's see. Come on this way. Yeah. <laughs> So you see the you see the lion head, the, the dark brown cat lion. Where are you going to work at? Y'all work for that. So that was the original. I put it back uh, inside. Don't take yours back in. Yeah, bolt the wall through the wall. Oh, okay. That's what they hung. Yeah, look at that stuff. Bolt through the wall. I don't think that's what you want. <laughs> oh, thank Jesus! What's well, that breeze? Oh, yeah, that feels good. You just had some windows open. Did you sign the book, Miss Eddie? Yes. You know, I signed that book now. <laughs>